Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the University of Adelaide and the official launch of uh, Orientation Week for 2016. Uh, my name is Dave Lamb, I'm the Executive Director in the uh, Division of the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic, and I'm your MC for the uh, session this morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Ghana people, the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the land on which the campuses at North Terrace, Waite, Roseworthy and Thebiton are built. Uh, this morning, I have very great pleasure in introducing Professor Warren Bevington, the Vice-Chancellor and President of the University of Adelaide. Professor Bevington is the University's 20th Vice-Chancellor and has been in office since July 2012. Please welcome Professor Bevington. Well, good morning, new undergraduates, and welcome to this magnificent ceremonial hall that was given to us by Sir Langdon Benighton over 80 years ago. Benighton was the man who owned the Advertiser newspaper and one of that group of marvellous benefactors who made this university possible. <clears throat> Congratulations on getting in here. Uh, of our 86 uh, first year courses, only six had ATARs below 80 <clears throat> uh, to get in, and the mean ATAR here this year was 92.65, which is the highest in our history. So this is a very bright class. Congratulations on being part of it. 10 days ago, on a Friday, flashed around the world news of uh, the discovery of gravitational waves, a discovery which is probably the single most important scientific discovery in my lifetime or yours. The media is so filled with noise that I would suspect many of you didn't even notice it. Hands up those who know what I'm talking about, the discovery of, oh, well, I'm impressed. Thank you. That's good, about half. <clears throat> The discovery of gravitational waves uh, was something postulated 100 years ago by Albert Einstein. And in his view, the universe was not just a kind of static, pretty picture of stars. Uh, it was a system that moved and made sound governed by actual gravitational waves. Problem was nobody was able to prove it until now, a century later. <clears throat> This discovery changes our concept of the universe. In the 18th century, Isaac Newton had proposed in his law of gravity, for example, that if the sun disappeared out of the solar system, all the planets would go spinning off uh, in random directions. Um, Einstein believed him to be wrong. So this has changed our concept of the universe. It also has rewritten great chunks of the discipline of physics. From now on, people will speak of three great landmarks in physics. Newton's discovery of the law of gravity in the 18th century, Einstein's general theory of relativity in the early 20th century, and now this great consortium of universities, LIGO, in the 21st century, identifying gravitational waves. All of it taken place in universities. Newton at Cambridge, um, um, <clears throat> Einstein at Humboldt University in Berlin, and now, science is much more complicated, a consortium of 90 universities in gravitational waves, of which we were one. There's a team in our physics department who were part of this. Now, this is the kind of discovery that universities exist for. There's people in government who would like us to focus our attention on short-term applied research, which is to say on projects that have a commercially driven outcome and that will produce economic product. The gravitational waves experiment was not short-term. It took 10 years, nor was it commercially driven. It was simply curiosity, nor was it applied research at all. It was basic research fundamental, long-term, curiosity-driven research of the kind that happens only uh, in universities. <clears throat> so Newton, who sat under that tree with the apple falling on him, things are a bit more complicated now. The equipment required for this experiment involved two enormous sensors 3,000 kilometres apart in, uh, in the US. 
It wouldn't be reasonable, though, to think that out of fundamental research like that, nothing of any use comes. Those of us who've been in universities a long time know that it usually more things of economic usefulness come out of basic research than out of applied research, which has a rather mixed history in universities. In gravitational waves already, the sensory equipment that was built to detect these tiny sounds billions of miles away uh, has commercial applications in health, in defence, in manufacturing. There will be a great deal more to come from this. <clears throat> So you've got people here, not just in physics, but all across our campus who are dedicated to this kind of intellectual quest. On your seat is a little dodger that looks like that, that's called our compact, because there's things that make a university work. There's things that you can expect from us and things that we expect from you to make this community work as a university. <clears throat> You can expect your staff to be dedicated to the kind of intellectual quest I've just described. You can expect them to fiercely defend differing ideas. A university has to be a neutral place where many kinds of ideas and opinions can be heard. <clears throat> you can expect them to be humane and caring, principled, but also not everything is serious on a university campus. Like this week, there's many uh, moments of fest festivity and fun which our staff take part in. That's what you expect from us. The staff will expect similar from you, for, for you to tolerate different ideas, ideas you might find quite repugnant, which you need to hear uh, with civility in peace. <clears throat> You need to treat others fairly. You need to inform yourself about the rules that make a university work and embrace the spirit of care and concern you'll find here. But also, of course, join with staff and others in the fun part as well. Please read that little compact because it's what animates a great deal of the thing which is essential to make a university work. <clears throat> I can remember when I was sitting where you are as a new undergraduate 46 years ago and looking around knowing almost no one. And in the coming days you'll have lots and lots of advice from people. There's only one piece of advice I give and that is for you to note that what you learn in classes at a university is only part of what happens at a great campus university. The other part is the professional network of people who become part of your life. <clears throat> so when you make friends, you need to realise these are people who are going to be your fellow professionals in your discipline uh, and might be important to you for the next 40, 50 years. I have a network of people around the world. I can pick up the phone, send them an email, open all kinds of doors at any time. Most of them I met in a room like this at the beginning of university orientation. So, I probably won't see you again in this hall till you step across this platform in three, four, five or six years to receive your degree. It's not a place that's open very often. But in the meantime, have fun, study hard, stay safe and good luck. <clears throat>
Professor Bevington, Vice-Chancellor, Renji Du, current president of the Adelaide University Union, current students, new students from Adelaide, interstate and abroad, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to the University of Adelaide. I'd like to thank you for the incredible privilege of addressing you this morning. If I can start by congratulating our new students for entry to the University of Adelaide, I can say from experience that you're in good hands. I myself was sitting in your position just eight years ago. I was about to commence the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery here at the University of Adelaide. Today, I'm working as a junior doctor in obstetrics and gynaecology just at the Women's and Children's Hospital. And in October this year, we'll be traveling to Oxford through the Rhodes Scholarship to study public health and conduct research in maternal and child health. What the University of Adelaide offered me was not just training in medicine, but an inquiring mind to question the wider factors that influence health in Australia and overseas, and a passion for research that pushes boundaries. I think there's something rather powerful about belonging to a university. At the simplest, universities are places for education and learning. It's the reason I sat in your position eight years ago and that most of you are here today. It's the chance to acquire knowledge and skills to be able to enter the workforce and a profession and contribute to your field in a meaningful way. However, I believe that universities represent more than that. Our universities are some of the largest free-thinking, politically unbiased institutions globally. They pioneered innovation far before Malcolm Turnbull adopted the word. They ask the questions that often our politicians won't, and they lead the research and development that the private sector often ignores. Historically, our universities and their students have been some of the greatest drivers of social progress and change and of scientific advancement and innovation in the world. I think we all know the images of the 1960s of students campaigning for the end um, of the Vietnam War. But within Australia, our students have also led the movements towards Aboriginal rights and reconciliation, towards equal pay for women in the workplace, and by continuing to question our role in wars overseas. Within my professional field, this university educated Sir Howard Florey, Nobel Laureate, who pioneered the commercial development of penicillin. In the time of the Second World War, when thousands of people were dying from wound infections, development of the first antibiotic penicillin had profound impacts on health and society. Our Australian universities are also behind the cervical cancer vaccine, spray-on skin technology for burns, eviction, burns victims, and the first IVF pregnancy in the world. But what is it that underpins this power of universities? What is their influence in society? Well, I think it's twofold. I think, firstly, it lies in the power of students. Educated students, you, represent the next generation of leaders, of politicians, of innovators. With education comes tolerance, and tolerant, well-educated, evidence-based ideas have strong, firm hold in today's society. And secondly, what we as universities have is this incredible idea of academic freedom. It says that we are allowed to, nay, we're encouraged to ask questions. It's something to be protected, but also something that deserves respect. And so to the new students here today, I would like to welcome you to your course and your degree, but I'd also challenge you to consider the wider picture of this institution and what it stands for. Because if you're willing to challenge yourself, then you have the chance to get your hand into the research that's pushing boundaries and get involved in asking the questions that challenge the way we currently see society. If I can offer any advice to new students, I'd say, that I believe there's two educations that you get at university. The first one's the one you enrol in. It's the classes, the tutorials, the assignments, the readings you do at home. But the second one's the one that you make for yourself. It's the people you meet, the tutors you engage in, the clubs and the societies you join, the discussions you get involved in, so that when you leave this place, you leave not just with a degree, but with a pa passion and a purpose and a challenging mind. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Danielle. Your achievements are uh, truly inspiring to all of us. 
I now have the pleasure of introducing the president of the Adelaide University Union, uh, Renji Du. Renji is your full-time student advocate on campus, and he's completing a double degree in engineering and arts. And I think he's just completed the engineering part of that. So please make Renji welcome. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for the invitation, and thank you, Daniel. And thank you to Alex and Scott, and Bertie Scott for coming here for the moral support as my friends. On behalf of the entire union and all student representatives, welcome and congratulations to everyone for getting into the University of Adelaide. Before coming to uni, I asked my dad what his university experience was like. He told me, bro, uh, yeah, we have this weird thing that we call each other brother sometimes. And bro, there's one moment in uni I'll never forget. One weekend, I was lying on my bed reading something really cliche about the most important traits for a person to have. As I was reading through the article, I suddenly thought, I want to be that person. And yes, I can totally be the person that was described in these traits. Now, when I think about my time through university, I feel a very similar feeling. I think the purpose of university education is about being the person that you would ideally like to be. Something I think is different about university education is that it cultivates you to think independently. In high school, everyone was more or less the same. It was all about trying to get the highest grade and trying to be cool. However, in uni, you can try, and trust me, like everyone else, I've also tried, but there's no longer such a thing as the coolest kid. Instead, what matters more is about exploring the person inside you. Being a nerd is no longer a negative thing here, and if you're interested in sports, you might find yourself sitting beside someone in a tutorial who's won Olympic medals. For first year courses, there might still be assignments that have a correct answer for everyone. But when you come to your third and fourth year, most of the course projects ask you to be creative. Even the lectures are waiting to be surprised by what you can make and what you can achieve. There might be a simple solution, but you are going to find that the creative outcomes your classmates find to problems could be much, much better. As you are all aware, at this university, at the University of Adelaide, we call it Sick Light. That is academically. Mentally, the stage of being a young adult is probably when your thoughts and opinions will change the most. This is the time of your life that you start seriously exploring what you would like to do academically, for your future career, and for your well-being. Joining a, club, joining a club of people who share the same interests as you is the start of your exploration. The union offers more than 150 social clubs, and the university sports offers more than 50 sporting clubs. S social clubs range in topics in, from debating to, to French, from robotics to volunteering, from religion to politics, and from anime and Harry Potter to career development. The sports clubs range from basketball, football, soccer, all the way to gliding, table tennis, and my personal favorite, badminton. And there are times in uni, you might just want to talk to someone, and maybe you've done something you regret, or maybe you've got a real emergency that needs some quick help. And in these times, the union is here to support you. Independent advice, advocacy, legal help, and grants for emergencies. These all come under our student care program. If you need some help getting a job, we can help as well with our employment services. Now I know this all might seem a little bit overwhelming for, to you so far, and possibly for the first few weeks. And honestly, it was the same case for me as well. If you're a bit lost, Bear in mind that the university and the union are always there to help. To everyone, congratulations again. I'm sure you'll find today unforgettable. I still remember crystal clear about my first day of orientation week. Everyone should remember this day because this is the beginning. This is the beginning of all possibilities, whether it's a school teacher, a politician, an engineer, a scientist, 
a lawyer, an artist, an astronaut, or an entrepreneur. It all starts from today. Thank you. Thank you, Renji. As the Vice Chancellor, Danielle and Renji have mentioned, there are many opportunities for you to get involved in uh, at our university. As you leave Benython Hall this morning, please visit, visit the Welcome Center in Hub Central. Uh, to find out where you can go next or to pick up information, uh, go on our campus tour or find out about the many information sessions that, and activities that are on offer. And I also believe there's a competition for you to enter there. On the Barsmith lawns at lunchtime today, there'll be a free barbecue. And you can collect information and freebies from any of the services and student clubs on display down on the lawns too. Look out for members of our welcome team. They're wearing a distinctive bright pink t-shirt and will be able to help you if you're not sure where to go. So on behalf of the university community, I hope you have a very enjoyable week this week and we wish you all the best in your studies. Thank you. Thank you.